The next laser printer provides 400 DPI as its standard rate, producing 75% greater image resolution than 300 DPI laser printers. So graphics, picture illustrations, and type look sharper and crisper. Software can be used to switch to the earlier convention of 300 DPI. It can print on a variety of paper sizes, A4, letter size, and even envelopes. Its straight paper path virtually eliminates jams. One important note about power, the next printer has a switch to select between 115 and 220 volts. Set the switch properly before plugging the printer into an electrical outlet. Feedback regarding paper and printer status is provided verbally by all next computers. Accompanying screen messages are also displayed. Since the computer does postscript processing for the screen and printing, you get exactly what you expect with every laser printed copy. The next laser printer, with its Canon engine that produces eight pages per minute, works only with next computers. To disassemble the laser printer, all you will need are two magnetic Phillips screwdrivers, one standard and one 12 inch, a flathead screwdriver, and a pair of diagonal cutters. The laser printer's service manual will help you troubleshoot the printer and provides detailed instructions for performing the procedures shown here. Please be aware that the laser printer contains a class one laser unit. The laser's invisible beam can cause permanent damage to your eyes. Never work on the printer while it is turned on. To start work, turn off the computer that's attached to the printer, then disconnect the printer's AC power cord and signal cable. Remove the paper cassette and tray. Place the printer in the center of a work table. Remove its upper cover first. Press the release on the top cover to open the printer. Remove the toner cartridge and set it aside. There are a number of screws on the bottom of the upper cover. Several are covered with red paint to prevent adjustment. Remove the three screws without paint. Use cups or a tray to separate the different types of screws as they are removed from the printer. This will make them easier to identify when it is time to reassemble. Lift the top edge of the cover slightly, then push back to disengage the upper cover from the frame. The positioning pins on the cover correspond to holes in the frame. Turn the printer to open the delivery unit. Remove the screw that attaches the paper exit panel to the delivery unit, then slightly flex the panel to remove it. Remove the screw holding the AC wiring cover and put the cover and screw aside. Push the delivery unit back to its normal position. Remove the ozone filter, check the filter and if necessary clean it. Next remove the lower cover. It is held in place by eight screws. One is located here under the fixing unit cleaning wand. Remove the wand for access. Another is located here near the transfer guide. Close the cover and remove the two screws from the paper delivery area. They are located here on the sides of the cover. Now open the cover, remove the remaining four screws from the top of the lower cover. Carefully flex the cover to unclip the sides nearest the paper delivery area, then lift the cover to remove it. The fan assembly is next. Remove the fan cover plate by taking out the single screw near the center. Three screws secure the fan to the printer. Remove them and lift the fan out. Unplug the power connector. Inspect the fan and, if necessary, clean it with compressed air. The AC controller unit is next. To the left of the fan area is a white connector on the end of a black cable coming out of the AC controller unit. Unplug the connector and unclip the cable from the top of the main motor. Disconnect the cables to see the fuse to the left in the low voltage power supply. Replace the fuse by unclipping it from its holder and installing a new one with identical ratings. The fixer assembly connector is located at the side of the printer near the paper delivery unit. Squeeze the connector and pull it from its socket to remove it from the AC controller unit. Remove the three screws that mount the AC controller unit to the printer base. Lift the unit straight up to unplug it from the connector underneath. To replace the low voltage power supply, remove the screw from its bracket, 
Then the three screws that secure the power supply to the printer base. These screws have both locking and common washers attached. Lift the power supply straight up to remove it. Rock it slightly to loosen it from the connectors below. Be careful when removing the power supply. Don't break the paper tray sensing cam. Examine the low voltage power supply. There is a separate printed circuit board screwed to one side. This board contains the cover interlock switch, optical sensors for paper tray status, and switches to adjust for the type of toner cartridge. Remove the four screws to free the circuit board from the power supply. Although it's mounted on the power supply, there are no connections between the units. The bracket mounted slightly above the sensor board may not be supplied on replacement units. If it's missing, just remove the old one and mount it on the new power supply. Now remove the high voltage power supply. Remove the cable from the left side of the high voltage power supply and unclip the nylon holder from the power supply's bracket. Remove just the cable from the holder or the entire holder, whichever is easier. Remove the two silver colored screws from the high voltage connector unit and lift it from the printer base. These screws are longer than most of the other screws removed so far. Four similar screws secure the power supply to the printer base. Remove the screws, tilt the supply slightly toward you, and lift the unit from the base. Next is the pickup roller unit. Remove two screws from the transfer guides, then lift off the top guide and the small spring under the right hand screw. The upper guide is shiny, while the lower guide has a dull finish. Remove the lower guide. Unscrew the second spring clip and remove it. Remember that the clip goes below the metal shaft while the first spring goes on top. Take out the four screws that hold the pickup roller unit to the printer base and lift the unit out of the printer. Remove the three screws that secure the transfer guide unit to the printer base and lift the unit out of the printer. If necessary, pry the unit carefully to free its positioning pin. Disconnect the remaining connector from the fixing assembly. Lift out the fixing roller cleaner. Remove the four screws that mount the fixing assembly to the printer base. This requires a 12 inch long Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws at the back of the assembly because it is necessary to reach through the framework to get to them. The exit sensor lever may have to be moved to reach the screw underneath it. Lift the fixing assembly slightly and take it out through the paper delivery opening. To remove the drive motor assembly, unplug the two cables from their connectors on top of the unit. Slide the tie wrap that secures the yellow wires off its pin. Now cut the tie wrap that secures the blue wires. Unclip the wires from the assembly. Remove the seven screws that mount the motor to the printer base. One of the screws is hidden here in the center of the motor assembly. Lift the motor and drive gear assembly from the printer. Remove the base cover by turning the printer on its side. There are 14 screws holding the cover to the printer. Now the interface board is accessible. Disconnect the cable from the side of the board. Remove both the single screw from the center of the board and the two screws from its bracket. Tilt the board up and out of the printer. If the interface board is being replaced, remove the jumper block from the old board and install it on the new one. Unscrew the two screws that hold the metal jumper cover in place. Below the cover, a screw holds the jumper block in place. Remove the screw and carefully pry the jumper block from its connector.
It's easy to use a screwdriver through the hole here to loosen the block. Install the jumper block on the new interface board before installing it in the printer. Remove the 10 connectors that have wires attached to the DC controller board. Do not remove the wires going to TB201, TB202, and TB203. Unclip the wires attached to the terminals from the nylon holder. Remove the two screws holding the low voltage power supply connector in the printer base. The remaining connector, J201, is the fiber optic cable from the laser assembly. Loosen the nylon cable clamp that holds it and the other cables so it can slide easily. The cable is fragile, so be careful not to bend it sharply. Grasp it near its end and pull it from the connector. Remove the four screws mounting the DC controller board to the printer base and lift the board out of the printer. To reassemble the printer, just retrace each step identified in the disassembly process. Many parts have locator pins or other means to help you mount the part in exactly the right position. Never force a part to make it fit. If a component is mounted with several screws, try inserting all of the screws before tightening them. Then it will not be necessary to loosen screws to move something later. Reattach the printer to the computer and plug the printer back into the power source. It is important to verify the repair. Turn on the computer. If a login window appears in the screen, ask your customer to log in. Ask the customer to start up the print manager application located in Next Apps. Test the printer by clicking the test button. If the resulting print page is not correct, open the printer and check the work that was done. If the problem persists, it will be necessary to return to the beginning of the troubleshooting process. After printing a perfect test page that meets with the customer's approval, ask the customer to turn off the computer by pressing the power key and following the directions on the screen. The next laser printer, designed with care to perform almost without care.